When you're doing your track recording and your composition, chances are you're going to have your audio interface buffer sizes set very low to minimize latency. However, when you get into mixing all of these tracks together and adding all sorts of effects, that can really task the CPU in your computer. It's going to require more power to do all of those things. And so at this point, you may want to consider increasing your buffers. And there's a couple of easy ways to tell if your buffers are set too low. If you experience pops or clicks or dropouts during playback, chances are your buffer is set too low for the task at hand. And so I'm going to go to the audio performance. That's going to open a little meter right here. It's going to have three segmented meters. The top two are for the CPU. And there's an average load meter and a real-time peak meter. The average load, you don't have to worry about so much unless it gets too high that it's hitting the red. However, the real-time peak fluctuates quite a bit. And so if you're running out of real-time peak power, this may require you to raise your buffer size and give your computer a little bit more room to breathe. For example, right now, if I were to play back, let's see where my meters are. Right now, it's not too bad. The average load is under 50%, and the real-time peak is below 25%, so right around 13 to maybe 18%. And then you see it jumps up from time to time, depending on what sort of effects you're playing back at any given time. So if you're experiencing dropouts or monitoring the audio performance window and you're seeing some of these things peak out or redline, then you need to increase your buffer size. And what I like to do is actually add a smaller version of the audio performance window to the toolbar up here. So I'm going to hit this little setup toolbar button and select the system performance meter. That's going to put a smaller version of that right up here. But now let's take a look at the buffer sizes. I'm going to go to the studio menu and studio setup. Then I'm going to find the VST audio system and I'm going to click on whatever appears underneath that. Then you're going to find the control panel, but take a look at your latencies first. Mine are at 4 milliseconds of input latency and 4.3 milliseconds of output latency. That's indicative of very low buffers, really great for recording, may not be so good for mixing. So let's click the control panel button and see where they're set. Right now my buffer size is at 64 samples. What I'm going to do is give it a really generous buffer size of 1024. Then I'll click close, then you click on OK, and it may take a little bit of time for your computer to reestablish or reconfigure the buffers. But when it's done, you can look at what it's done to the latency. Right now, I have 25 milliseconds at the input and 26 at the output, meaning that if I were to record virtual instruments using my MIDI keyboard, I would notice that latency. But since I'm not doing any more recording, that's going to be less of a concern right now. What is of more concern is that my computer can play the project back without pops and clicks and dropouts. So now let's see the result of those higher buffer sizes, and let's check our audio performance meter. I'll start playback here. If we look at the small version, we can see that the average load is still kind of high, but let's take a look at the big version, because we can see that the average load is actually quite a bit lower. Before, it was approaching the 50% mark at about 45%. Now it's a lot lower, but more significantly, look at the real-time peak. It's way down here. So giving your computer a little more room to breathe with a larger buffer size will ensure that the playback of your project won't experience those dropout anomalies. So that's the buffer size. Next, let's talk about project preparations.